All right, folks, check it out. This is the Home Light Super 2. This is the one that didn't have spark um, when we did the original diagnosing video. Um, what I do? Took the uh, starter cover off, took the mag uh, flywheel out, cleaned the points, and shebang a boodle. She's got spark. So, um, yeah, started yesterday, but I just want to show you guys um, where we're at now. So, choke is on, kill switch is on. Still getting the kinks out, but share with you the home light and then of course the McCulloch 610 this thing fires literally first pull uh, all I did was I put fuel in this one the home light I cleaned the points and that's literally all I did this Mac this thing runs great <laughs> almost one pull every time Want to share um, two of those are good to roll so let's see if, if we can find some wood to cut maybe we'll run these today let's go have a look well we couldn't get out in the woods so we're gonna do the next best thing we're gonna run the chipper here we're gonna take all the limbs that we can find from our uh, tree climbing tree here and we're gonna toss them out we're gonna chip them we're just gonna have some fun here on the homestead I'm gonna run that Mac and I'm gonna run that home line I want to see how those things go so yeah we're just gonna see how some we're bringing breeding new life into old saws. That's what we're doing today. So yeah, that's some fun. Try to figure out that choke. Good afternoon, folks. How's everybody doing today? I, I love the fact that we got this home light running. What a great little saw. Those two double... I'm going to talk about this in a second, but those two double triggers are really, really cool depending on your hand position. It's got a trigger in the front like a conventional top handle, and then it's got a trigger in the back as if you're using a conventional um, chainsaw. But yeah, this thing cuts great um we sharpened the chain we got it running like i said just cleaned the points in it put some fresh fuel in it i think i changed the f yeah i changed the fuel filter too but this is all just limbs and stuff from the um tree climbing video which we had a lot of fun doing again thank you guys that was a few this that was a couple videos back but um thank you guys for all your advice i've been talking to a couple climbers on the side from that video so got a lot of good advice from that so um much appreciated but here we go i'm about to talk about it you can see how excited i am so let's go skip back over to that part man i'll tell you this thing is great lemon saw i love how it's got the front trigger here and the back trigger here so if you're going to reach out this will make a good climbing saw the only thing is is there's no chain break i'm not a fan of having a climbing saw with no chain break i am nowhere near that level of 
swag or whatever you want to call it to run uh, a saw with no chain break as a climbing saw. But anyways, here we go. Let's go ahead and chip some brush. I am tickled fancy with this chipper here. Um, I love it. It's it's almost like therapeutic. It really is. Um, just to turn all that waste into just wood chips that we can spread in the mud and the dirt and kind of suck up some of the water here in mud season in New Hampshire. So this thing's been the cat's meow since we got it. All righty, this chipper makes quick work of that pile, huh? Look at that. I love this thing. Wow, that's actually pretty full. <laughs> this thing's great. Look at that compost. Love it. So let's get the mat. I'm not going crazy. Uh, we just got, like I said, we just got eight inches of snow. I'm just kind of farting around, trying to see how the home light runs. Let's get the Mac and let's see if we can buck that up. Actually, let's see if we could skid that out. I doubt it, but let's see if we could skid that out with the tractor. Then we'll, we'll start running the Mac. See how that baby cuts. That's a 610, so we'll see. Let's see if we can rig that and get that out of there. All right, so we got our choker cable hooked to our log here. We got our chain set up, linked in. Let's see if EO Kubota BX can pull that stick out. Make some uh, boiler firewood out of this. So we're gonna cut it flush, measure 24 inches, we'll run them once through the splitter. That'll give us some good firewood for the boiler. Let's get the Mac. All right, so let's start the Mac Daddy here and see how she does. Even though we had it running earlier, it's been probably an hour since then. So we'll see here. Choke. This thing's been pretty good about starting first pull. sharpened we reset the depth gauges let's see how it cuts now that was kind of doggish to start so let's see better. <laughs> 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 
tell you what a difference that made. Set the depth gauges and putting a fresh edge on that. This thing roars. Set of um, spikes on that, felling spikes or whatever, bucking spikes, that thing will rip. That was pretty good. I need to do a couple settings on it. So I got a little bit of fine tuning to do on it. I, it's running a little rich. As you saw in the beginning, it's smoking like a train. Uh, I'm running 50 to 1 in it. So I'm, it doesn't have like a heavy like 32 to 1 oil mixing it i'm running 50 to 1 with ams oil i'm uh, not ams oil um with echo red armor there so it smokes a bit but it needs a little bit of a retune but um after that first cut to the second cut what a whirlwind of difference i think if we get uh a felling spike for it where we can buck into we can get the spikes into the log and put a little pressure on it um i think the thing will really hog through some uh wood chips here so the there was a big snowbank there for the first few cuts that was suspending the tree up so i wanted to just literally pull it out a little bit to make a few cuts keep the saw out of the dirt and the muck uh especially the fact that i just sharpened it obviously i don't want to be hitting any dirt but um yeah cuts good hey for for 60 what was it 60 bucks for five saws or whatever <laughs> it got the job done so doesn't really uh doesn't really bother me but we're gonna move on to splitting now um I cut these into 24 inch sections here uh, and we're going to load them right in the, the firewood cart here. But these are just single splits for the boiler. Again, this is pine. The tree wasn't straight enough, big enough or tall enough to make like any boards out of it. It wasn't worth me, you know, trying to get it to a sawmill. We have some really nice straight timber, which we'll get to uh, in the future. But anyways, yeah, needless to say, not a bad day. We made the best of it. Um, you can't get in the woods it's just so muddy and mucky and wet and we just got all this nasty snow so needless to say we're just cleaning up the previous messes we made so that's about it so this is where i think the little yeah, pick I'll, I'll swing by will work good to get the wood out of the trailer up to at least like here good working height yeah see i think that works pretty good that's $20 I've ever spent. So if you heard what I was saying, that little pick of room that I just stuck in the log there, um, I don't know, I had this this idea uh, just one night. I was thinking, I was like, you know, I could use a smaller pick of room just to pull wood out of the woodsheds and kind of get it out of the trailer. The pick of room that my dad's using is on a 36-inch hickory handle. The one I have is on like a 13-inch handle, and it's, it's super convenient. Um, I'll go over that in another video. Homestead Jim's here in case you guys didn't notice. Uh, he's helping out. He wants to run the chipper, so. <laughs> we're gonna 
wheel her back over and chip these last couple couple stragglers here. I was chipping before before Dad got here, so, so. turn around so the ship flies. Right, it doesn't matter. Well, kill myself on that rock. It doesn't matter. Right after that log that we realized that the belt was starting to really fail on this. And I'll show you a clip of it next. But um, we were just trying to get through um, the rest of this here. But you'll notice here, see there's a little piece sticking out. That's preventing it from getting through the hole. I actually chip it off the handlebar here. Watch. Hold on. You'll see right now. Hold on. Right here. I chipped it off the little bracket there. That's a... I, there should be like a little, almost like a cutting edge on the side of the chute there. Just so you can nip the little uh, branches that you missed with the limit saw off. But I get this down to a point and now we're just going to uh, throw in the firewood cart. Well, I smoked that belt. Remember I was telling you I got, a, I got two cheaper ones online? Yeah, that's crap. I'm going to get one of those gates. Oh yeah, I'm gonna go to Tractor Squad and get a better one. That's why it was bogging with that that big green one. Cause it's, it's probably slipping a bit, but hey, whatever, got the job done. We'll get a new belt for it. We changed the original belt. I got two cheapy ones on uh, online, but as you can see, those aren't the right belts for this machine, so. Either way, we got it All done. All right, folks, so there you go. We need a new belt in the chipper, but that's not a big deal. Homestead Jim and I got pretty much most of that tree done cut up we got to run some vintage saws just staying busy here as you can see it's a total swamp we got a ton of snow it's wet it's 40 degrees out so uh needless to say that's all i got for you folks so thanks for watching thanks for tuning in god bless and like i always say we will uh see you guys out in the woods say see bye you guys. guys there you go all right see you later folks